So we start this third with Andrew and uh, news from the school lavatory. Oh, what an interesting way of putting it. <laughs> uh, Suella Braveman, the Attorney General, has uh, said or is going to say in a speech uh, that schools that offer gender-neutral lavatory facilities are acting unlawfully and is effectively talking about how if a, a child at a school wants to socially transition their gender, parents need to be informed, which you would have thought was a... A, a no-brainer, yeah. You would have thought so, but apparently there have been a number of schools who have been telling pupils they don't need to inform their parents and effectively keeping that secret from them. So that's, right. that's not good. And also, when it comes to the gender-neutral lavatory situation, uh, schools have been prioritising... Uh, the uh, declared gender identity of pupils and not considering the feelings of other pupils who have to use those facilities as well, yeah. many of whom probably don't uh, uh, sort of uh, agree with the idea of a gender identity because only a very small minority of people have a gender identity. Yeah. Uh, most people don't have one at all. So, you know, it, it just comes back to this you all... Mean, sorry, you mean, sorry, they have no identity or they have, they have an identity that just goes along with their sex and, and they don't give it much thought? Well, I, I no, I think most people see uh, themselves as either male or female yeah. as being as mundane as being left or right-handed. I don't identify as being right-handed, no, I just no, am. Okay. And yeah. I don't identify as being male, I just am. But I suppose um, if, I, you find the, if you find the wrong person in your view, in your lavatory, that is a, an expression of something that... You could well, say that was a sort of a sudden awakening of your gender... Not gender, sex. Right. And I think that's the point. And I think particularly if you're a young person going through puberty, those things really do yeah. uh, matter in all sorts of ways. And, of course, this has come post the closure of the Tavistock Clinic, the gender paediatric clinic. Yeah. And what this comes down to is there, are now, there is now a growing, burgeoning kind of awareness of the problems of running a society on the basis of gender identity rather than biological sex. Yeah. And um, more and more people are waking up to the problems that this poses. And I think this is... And especially an with important children thing. who yeah, are extraordinarily hugely. fluid and, and uh, if not damn right, capricious, you know, yeah, with these kind of notions of who they are from one minute and, to the next. And we know from studies with the, with the Tavistock, and a lot of the whistleblowers of the Tavistock were pointing out, yeah. there are all sorts of reasons why young people can feel uncomfortable with their gender. Some will go on to experience sincere gender dysphoria in later life and will need to transition. The yeah. vast majority will be either autistic or gay or struggling with puberty, all these other things mm. that, that tend to, to be resolved through either therapeutic Measures which uh, some activists wanted to ban and started calling it trans conversion therapy, which mm. is not what it is at all. No. Um, and uh, you know, or it'll be resolved through puberty itself. But of course, if activists get their way, that's prevented through uh, hormone blockers. Mm. Josh, you have kids. I mean, how would how would you feel if you if you felt that your that their school was willing to sort of con connive mm. with them in, behind your back? Absolutely. Well, I not to happy, uh, contradict what Andrew said. I mean, Andrew doesn't actually know very much about this particular issue. <laughs> um, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> no, but what they're actually doing, it's not that they're not, they now have to inform the parents, yeah. is that they have to actually get permission from the parents. And that's right. also a much, a much better step in the right direction. Yeah. There's a few other things here, but the, one of the things that she's saying is that the head, head teachers, and a lot of the reason why these things have happened is because head teachers haven't had the national guidance, because everybody's been asleep at the wheel on this issue. So guess who stepped in? Lobby groups. And of course, they're going to push, which is fair enough, their position. So that's the problem of what's happened, and that's why we need, like, governmental advice, because head teachers know, need to know now. You know, if you're a boy who identifies as a girl, does that mean you now get to go to a girls' school mm. or whatever? Like, these sort of things need to be laid out in law. I think it's, it's interesting that you say, and we'll, we'll move on in just one second, it's interesting you say that this has been, you know, the initiative been taken by the lobby groups, and that's kind of fair mm. enough. I don't think it is fair enough, actually, because the lobby groups were quite explicitly... Oh. Like, incredibly... I mean, it wasn't just, like, campaigning. It was, like, there's no debate. This is not up for discussion. Oh, not, not only that. Is not, you know, no, but I mean, Stonewall I, I, I was just... misrepresenting the law. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'm not you saying know, they're good. I'm just saying they're going to do yeah. what they do.